my dear. My name is Colonel Frank H.W. Miller, and I am most thankful to be addressing you today. Looking back at my long and adventurous life, there are many significant moments that have given me tremendous joy. Marrying my dear wife, Mrs. Miller. The publishing of my detailed history of, first, the Queen's Dragoon Guards, 1959-2007, being invited to give the eulogy at Brigadier Sir Alec McIntosh's funeral two years ago, and to be asked to give a toast when Dr. and Mrs. Smythe, some of you may know them, retired. Recently, I have been looking through my extensive collection of old newspapers. By Jove, there have been some significant events around the world in my lifetime. The invention of the World Wide Web. Twelve people walking on the moon. Glasnost. England winning the World Cup in 1966. The coronation of Her Majesty in 1953, the Channel Tunnel opening in 1994, and the publication of the 21 famous five books that were penned by Enid Blyton, who I find to be most inventive and erudite. However, even though these events have all been written about extensively and have impacted large numbers of people, there is an event in world history that is significantly more significant than all of them and has indeed been most important to myself. It is easily the most significant event ever in the history of the world. I am talking about the death and resurrection of Jesus. For the next few moments I would like to explain why I am extremely passionate about Jesus. Unabashed, I can honestly tell you that Jesus is my Lord and Saviour. Many people say that in my prime I was a fine specimen of a man, but unequivocally I needed Jesus then and still do today. All of us try to live well and to be helpful to family friends and strangers. It's perhaps the way our parents taught us to be. I find that I often fail to live up to the standards that I set for myself. I don't e always easily forgive very quickly when someone wrongs me. If someone asks me to do something I'd rather not do, I might do it but very grudgingly. I sometimes choose to be negative and snappy if someone irritates me. The Bible talks about all of these things and labels them with a word that is quite unfashionable at the moment. Sin. Despite our propensity to be able to solve a wide array of difficult issues and problems, we humans can do nothing about sin. Even if the best people that ever lived perhaps Florence Nightingale, John Noakes and Pope John Paul II as three examples, fail to live up to their own standards, let alone God's very high standards. Everyone in the world is a sinner. The Bible helpfully states, If we own up to our sins, God shows that he is faithful and just by forgiving us of our sins, and purifying us from the pollution of all the bad things we have done. Jesus' death and resurrection enables us all to be free from the consequence of sin. Today, Jesus offers us all a new life. I sincerely ask you to actively consider this. Whoever you are, and wherever you live, you need Jesus in your life. Today, you can give your life to Jesus. Today, you can decide to follow the Saviour of the world. God has set before us all a choice between life and death. Let us decide to choose life. I'm going to pray for us all now. 
God, we are so grateful for that first Easter weekend 2,000 years ago. Thank you that through your death and resurrection we can know eternal life rather than suffering eternal death because of what we have all done in our lives. You came to earth for a purpose, to destroy sin, death and the devil. You accomplished all of this. We give our lives to you now. Please be glorified in the way we think, speak and act. Amen. I hope to discuss some more important topics with you in the near future, but in the meantime, open your life to God and ask him to speak to you. Put God first. Seek God above everything else. Make him the top priority in your life. Happy Easter everyone and cheerio!